Hey, it's Doug from Rise Above Performance Training. A few weeks ago, Mike Salemi of Kettlebell Lifestyle and I had a workshop here at my gym for kettlebells, and we demonstrated a bunch of things, including how to do a one-arm swing, how to do a military press or overhead press, and then how to work on a clean, particularly a guided clean. So in this video, I'm just gonna show some of the highlights from that workshop, and you guys can pick up some tips to help out your kettlebell. If you like this video, please like it down below, and also please subscribe down below. Check out the playlist that I have on different things like sports performance training, kettlebell training, and also I'm going to put up a new video every week. So thanks for your support, and let's check out the highlights. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hike it through, got my free arm, and when I'm ready, all I did Slide it around, and I have it, this is okay, not great. <laughs> so I'm gonna do it again. And plug it right in there, okay? Use as much arm as you need, and then we're gonna slowly start taking that arm away. Let's just go on your strong, more coordinated side for right now, and then we'll go to the other side, okay? About the cleans, even though it's hard, it gives you instant feedback. So if it knocks you over or hurts, then <laughs> with something we gotta fix, right? So ideally, it's supposed to be smooth, um, I didn't see too much, you know, some, some not so smooth ones. And the reason, there are two things. One, the bell's out here, and then we're yanking it in, bam, pulling in. Yes, so that, uh, some of you guys did that. You probably, I uh, saw you cringe. So, yeah, that's what we don't want to do. So, we're keeping it close. Remember Mike said, when the weight's close to you, it's safe. Slide. Okay, so that was pretty smooth right there. The second thing is, um, we don't want to clean too high. So as Mike said, the rack position, see my thumb right on the clavicle? It's not gonna go over that clavicle. Do you guys feel that bone that connects your neck to your shoulder? Yeah, so we wanna keep that, my thumb is right here. So the other common mistake is high, bam, and down. We don't just, you know, if you do that, you can probably even break your clavicle if you do it too hard. So we wanna keep it sort of close, okay? That's why we gotta build off the swing. So again, let's do, um, let's go two swings and then two guided cleans. So we get a few more guided cleans in there, but really build off the swing. If your two swings aren't good, do another swing until you feel like, okay, now I can clean. So again, if you need to set it down, do it, because I haven't taught you how to bring it down yet. And I'm gonna guide, everything's locked in place. I'm in a decent rack position right here, hands through, and then I'll set it down safely, okay? So let's try that again, smooth it out, no banging. Um, we'll, let's do one more guided clean, and then we'll kind of learn how to put them together. It's gonna be a work in progress, trust me. I'm still constantly kind of work on mine. When you bring the bell over, so like I said, the rib cage thing, my arm comes up, my hand, it's not rotating or twisting, and I think that's where your, your issue is. You just wanna come through like this, so like an uppercut. So as, let me try it. Let's see if I can slow it down. So as I'm coming through, I wait, and that's it. So I'm not twisting to get it over or anything like that. All it is, I wait, and I'm pushing the bell through with the guide, and I'm sliding my hand up. Okay, so the least amount of movement possible. It's not here, it's here. It's right rib cage. so I'm just right along the rib cage. So not here, not here, not here right along, yeah, here. Okay, so let's try that, slide through, Finish up. Do as much as you need in terms of the guide if you want to do a couple. And then I'm going to give you one more tip and then we'll start putting it all together. Okay? So hike through. Kind of, we got to do two things. We got to get our back involved a little bit um, to help you out because I think you guys are focusing on lifting it a lot. So we're just going to get a little bit of back, kind of re slight retraction. I don't want you to overdo it and really pull back. But all we're going to do is when the bell's here, we're just going to do a little bit of pull. Now, the other thing is be patient. It's gonna take a second to get into the rack position. So especially like when we're doing snatches, a lot of people are like, oh, I wanna finish fast and, and stop short. Be patient, finish, then it's gonna settle. It's gotta take at least maybe a half second to a second to settle. So as long as you have a good foundation, the bell's gonna settle last. Um, so what we're gonna do here, I just want a little pull, see that? Yeah. Little pull, keeping it close, all I'm doing is Kind of this, don't overdo it, but right in here, pull and then finish the, the bell, okay? That's gonna help, your back's a little stronger than obviously lifting the bell and in, 
So let's see if we can do that. Guide if you need to, and then we're gonna start taking the guide away and see if we can make, um, we're gonna learn the drop and also um, putting it all together so we get a good clean so you guys can practice it. It's gonna be a work in progress. For some of you, it's not gonna happen directly today. If we can get a few nice reps, you know, that's what we're gonna shoot for for today. Um, yeah, so, you know, still based everything off the swing, I still see a little bit like we're so focused on this and we're this, you know, we're not getting our hips in there. So if you're catching low like this, no legs, use your legs. Um, if, you're, if you're banging or going out, too much arm, you know? So it's just kind of, you gotta find that right balance of how much you need with the leg and then the timing. And like I said, be patient with it. Okay, so what we're gonna do on the guided clean, and again, this is a good drill like we talked about earlier, use how much that you need to use. If you're getting good, you can start, we're gonna slowly start taking it away. And I'm going to show you the drop first, but if you're um, still needs to work, guide more. Okay. Obviously in the competition, you're not going to be able to do it, but you know, in a few weeks you'll be able to do it. I'm going to go really slow with the light bell. So I'm going to guide it up here. The drop we're going to learn right now. And then we're going to drop. It's just like spilling water. Like Mike said earlier in that mobility drill, we're going to drop through keeping close and hiking through very common in the clean to have it pull you forward. So we gotta drop, my upper arm stays close to my body. As it's coming through, I have to kind of give a little bit more of an effort on the hinge because the pendulum's short. On a snatch, I have a lot more momentum, I can just carry it through. On this, I gotta have to push my hips back. So I'm spilling my water, this stays connected. I push through, guide back up, <clears throat> drop, 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 okay? See if you can do that. Do like three to five drops. Very good. So now let's just start, um, we'll put it kind of all together, okay? So again, um, really use the guided clean. I'm gonna say it a million times, but, but do it. Um, especially if things are starting to bang around, use it. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna set up my one arm swing position we did earlier. I'm gonna hike through. If I wanna do a couple swings, I can. I'm gonna guide it up, I'm gonna hike through. The other thing I'm doing when I'm on top of my clean, I'm waiting a second. I gotta make sure I have a good rack position. So in competition, you can't go like this and punch it up because you gotta be stable. One, make sure you have a good clean, and two, for a legal rep, you gotta set and go. So I'm gonna guide it up, drop. Now I'm feeling good, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna bring my hand here, but I'm gonna slowly start taking a game taking it away, maybe one finger. And then I'm gonna bring it there. So it's just sometimes the mental of image of me bringing my hand there helps guide the bell into that position. But I'm still building off the hips every time. That's the most important part, being patient, sliding through. So try that out, use as much guide as you need. I recommend maybe only five cleans a side. So don't you know, focus 10 on your right and then don't get any on your left, okay? So go ahead, yeah, yeah, sure. Quick. So one thing I actually have to have you. Uh, okay. It's something that you said that I thought was really good. So okay. Hold the, actually, let's grab a lighter bell. Yeah. Let's do that. Uh, yeah, it's perfect. All right. So one thing that you notice with with Doug and the, and the reason why it's so smooth and this is where the assisted clean really helps and I love the way Doug teaches it is if when Doug comes through so the acceleration phase of the lift essentially this is a, a hip driven movement so as Doug drives the hips forward that's what propels the kettlebell forward right. But if you look, so let's hold it right here. See how the kettlebell's positioned? See how it's right here? When Doug inserts his hand, the kettlebell goes around the side. Okay, so it travels this way, okay? When you see a lot of people banging, it's, or doing too much rotation, it's coming up over the top, boom, okay? So your goal is to cut the kettlebell at not only, probably it's, it's more lower point, so don't let it, if I need to essentially, we just need to get to chest level, right? And a lot of times what I like to do is I like to make sure the hand is fully inserted before I actually absorb it into the chest. So it's not like shoulder, it's not like shoulder first, then insertion, it's insertion, real quick. So if I were to, I'll exaggerate it, but if I were to go here, here. So before I even hit, the rack position's here, right? Before it even comes into the rack, my hand should be fully inserted. So it's, just like Doug was saying at, at the top of the swing, you can release. It's getting comfortable with that, so practice that, and then it's just sliding your hand 
through a glove and then you can bring in another rack. But the kettlebell falls around the side. So in that assisted clean that Doug was showing, just practice that. So grab it, feel it, and it's around the side. It's not over the top. Okay? My point, we were just discussing the background here. The traditional kettlebell foundational swing or hard style swing is going to be palm down. So see how my palm's here and I'm hiking through? That's going to be actually harder to clean. So we do learn that clean and when I, so it's palm down. I just have to rotate a little bit more. When you do kettlebell sport, most people are going thumb up swings. I don't teach that so much. Like later on when you guys do your sport, yes. Um, but for foundational stuff, I don't because it's just, you know, it's a lot, a little bit more on the bicep, stuff like that. But it's very easy to cut the bell a whole lot. So, you know, play with your swings, you know, practice your swings like this. If you practice your cleans, you know, you can go through and it's very easy to cut the bell when the thumb is up. And then I'm sure Mike's going to program that when you guys get into more of the sports stuff. So just keep that in mind. Those are the little details that, again, we're... we're and this is why I love competition, not because I think it's, it's great to, I mean, it is really good to get on stage and challenge yourself, but it's like the process that you have to go to with an intention of, you know, re hitting a PR, whether it's repetitions or weights, like all these little things as you'll find, absolutely will play into your competition set. And each, you know, as you're seeing every two weeks, there's kind of a theme involved and we're adding a little bit more, but that just little thing, that will be a, a big factor, as small as it might seem right now. Any questions on your guys? Cool. All right. Overhead. Yeah. Sure. Uh, overhead press, strip press. Yeah. Okay. Strip press. So we're gonna do overhead strip press. So like we talked about, the clean is a foundational or transitional movement. So when we clean the bell up, my rack position. But I have to have a good rack position. Let's say I want to press overhead. We're gonna do a strip press, military press. <laughs> Um, we have to have a good rack position first, okay? If I have a weak rack position where I'm holding the bell, it's gonna be a lot harder. So in a press, this is not how you're gonna necessarily do it in a competition, but if you wanna build strong shoulders and a very good foundation, this is a good drill to, to do. So we're gonna just have our base, kind of our swing brace. So if we have a good swing base and then we get a good clean and a good rack position, we should be able to press from here. If we're too wide, it's gonna be a lot harder. So from the rack position, a few things I wanna do first. I wanna set my shoulders. I'm gonna kind of just pull them down just a little bit. In um, the RKC, they talk about squeezing a sponge, which is a good analogy. So if you kind of have a water-filled sponge in your armpit, you're gonna squeeze that sponge. That's gonna activate your lat muscles. You get, so if you guys know your lat muscles, that big wing, if you ever watch swimmers, and everybody else, oh, back like that. That's the lat muscle. We wanna engage that muscle. The lats do a bunch of things. They're, they connect all the way up from the neck all the way down to the lumbar spine. They actually can help assist, assist pressing also for stability. So a lot of people think the lats are pulling down, but we're gonna kind of use the lats to help press. The other thing is too, is we wanna grip the bell before we press. And I mean grip it because for a couple of things. One, it straightens the wrist. I don't wanna press with a bent wrist. Two, I can press this bell like this, but I'm going to uh, maybe be very limited by the number of bells I can press. So I want to have good technique, as Mike said, what, no matter what the bell, we want to move up with good technique. Three, it's going to make you stronger. It's going to create all this tension through your body, kind of like a chain reaction through your feet. So when I press, I'm going to tighten up. I'm tightening my core, so just like those mobility drills, I'm tucking my tail underneath me, gripping the bell, and I'm going to press. When I press, there's a bunch of ways to press the bell. I don't want to swing out because we talked about being over structure. This is okay, you can kind of do it, but it's a, most people's shoulders, not so good. I want to press more like a J shape. So I'm going to keep it, if you imagine the J at the bottom here, I'm going to keep it just over the top and here. I'm over my structure, you can see I'm over my hip. You got to have pretty good shoulder mobility too. So the two things we don't want to do are externally rotate and press, old school Arnold Schwarzenegger style at the gym. And we don't want to press in front of us. If you're limited in shoulder mobility, it's going to be a little bit of an issue to start, but we're going to try to do that. So let's bring the bell into our rack position. However you want, I recommend a good clean. Cool. Go on your strong side. All right. You guys are all in a good spot. You can press your bell. You got a good bell you can press. All right. So we're going to tighten up our glutes, connect to the floor, squeeze your sponge, squeeze your handle. And let's just try to make that J shape. Exhaling on the way up. Good. 
Now, you should be able to stay here for a little while. If I move my bell forward as Mike did in that swing drill, um, we're not gonna be able to stay here for a while. So, I'm be here. Now, like a chin up, I'm gonna pull the bell down and hopefully plug right in that rack. I did the other arm just to show you guys, but you don't have to do that. But I'm gonna plug right into that rack position. Grip the heck out of the handle, tighten up, press. Good, and relax your shoulder a little bit, Dave. Good, and try to bring it. Good. Pull down, back in. Okay, let's set it down safely, and we'll go to the other side, and then we'll kind of troubleshoot a few little things, okay? So again, I recommend a good clean. Always practice your cleans. So I'm gonna hike through. If I need to bring my feet in a little, I will. Okay, is that a, is that a good rack position? Be in a good rack, yeah. So relax, bring it down. There, cool. You should be able to hang out there for a while. If I tell you to wait there for an hour, you should be able to do it. <laughs> Mike makes me like farmer walks or hold bells for like 10 minutes. Okay. We do do a one hour non-stop charity event. Yes. Cleaning and jerking for an hour for charity, so. If you just hold it up like this for even a few <laughs> inches, you're done, you're toast. So anyway, we're gonna tighten up, squeeze our sponge, tighten our bottom, tighten our legs, press, J-shaped. One of your shoulders may not move exactly the same as the other. Ideally, you wanna lock out if your joints are pretty good. Cool. Chin up in and down. Good. One more time, and then like I said, we'll add some small details. Tighten up, squeeze that sponge, press against the bell. Good. Control down. All right, set it down safely. So um, the shoulders can move in almost any direction. So you know, if you're working at a computer or stuff like that, it's going to pull a lot of things forward. You may not be able to get directly over your head. You're going to fake it by doing something like this. It's okay. It's just be aware of it. So I wouldn't, you know, I press lighter bells and do a lot of um, correctives and mobility. Also, too, a lot of there's a little bit of this, so it's, I can't get that arm here without, you know, kind of faking over the hip. So we want to make sure, you know, eventually we want to make sure that we can bring our arms over our head. Um, yeah. Other thing too, shoulders should be relatively down, not really depressed, but we don't want to go up. So when we press, we don't want to do this. Either the weight's too heavy or our traps are just engaged all the time. So we don't want to press up when we're pressing like that. So as we're pressing up, we're kind of keeping that shoulder set down. If you guys are having trouble with mobility, you know, uh, use the PVC pipe. You want to start getting mobility without lifting your thoracic uh, spine here, yeah, or your rib cage. You want to keep that down and just kind of work in that. You can work your pullovers and whatnot. Um, one other thing I want to teach you guys with the press, I want to push, and this really helped me when I was pressing a heavy kettlebell. I want to push, a, like Mike talked about kettlebell sport, yeah, a little bit of a rough on the wrist, but I want to press against the bell, contact point. So as you can see, my wrist is against that belt. If I do that and I make that window, not only is it bad for my wrist, I'm not gonna have a strong press. I wanna wrist straight. I wanna push contact point against the bell. So I feel the bell the whole time. If I shift in a little bit, I, don't, I feel a contact point, but I'm not pushing against it. So I wanna push against that contact point, and then it can turn a little bit at the top when I'm safe. But that's what you want, pushing right against it the whole time. So you kind of have that counter pressure, and that's going to keep you stable as you drive through the legs. One more thing, like I said with the lats, and I brought it up over here, is that squeezing the sponge is a really good analogy. So I'm not, even though it's called a shoulder press or a military press, I'm not pressing with my shoulder. I'm wedging myself underneath the weight. So they did a thing with the doorway where we really pressed and kind of pushed our bodies underneath the weight. So I'm driving, I'm driving my feet into the ground and wedging myself. I'm building a strong plat. These should be turned on and you should also get a cramp in your back when you're pressing heavy, wedging yourself underneath. So I'm not pushing like this and kind of disconnecting from the ground. The ground's in and I'm really wedging myself underneath. So if you think like that, it might be a harder initially because you're so tense and you might not move as well, but in the long run, you'll be able to build that foundation and get up to heavier weights with that. Any questions there?
No? Do you want to uh, add one last yeah. thing? So um, everyone did great today. I just want to go over one last movement, which is a kind of a progression off of this. So in the program, we've got overhead rack walks or overhead lockout walks, just like we have rack walks. And in the program, I also start introducing for even the tier one group. Uh, week one, uh, Doug was saying, I mean, I would drill strict pressing. And if you don't feel you have that master, just stick with the strict pressing for the exercise progression uh, throughout the whole two weeks. Uh, the last month we'll get into you know more uh, push pressing and jerking but if you don't have a good press if you don't have a good groove and all that stuff then there's no point in doing something more dynamic and that's also why we're only introducing the press now and uh in the program why the first two weeks were you know there's an emphasis on corrective stretching and and all that stuff to, to open up the area so a lot of times when we got a lot of strong lifters here it's not even so much a strength issue it's the ability to get the body in the correct position so that you, you can utilize that strength. So if the lats are super tight, if the pecs are super tight, if the T-spine is very rigid from being at a desk all day, I mean the last, the, from this point to this point, what's responsible to get the arm overhead should be extension of the T-spine. Most people are so locked up here that when they go to press, they can get the arm overhead, but it's not, the, the load is not being shared by the T-spine, so it's all going to the glenohumeral joint. So that's where the rotator cuff gets lit up and all that stuff. So it's very important that you're doing that. That's why I said the most important, if you don't got time to train, do the mobility, do the stretching. Every single day I, I put stretching up, you know, 20 minutes, whatever it is, for those areas that you specifically need to. And the overhead position is one of the most tough people just due to the our lifestyle. So um, we won't go into the push press. Me and Doug did shoot some short technique videos this week where I go over introducing the push press. But uh, I don't want to go over that now. I just want to just do uh, the press again. And I want to discuss a little bit of the overhead position. So when you do your overhead walks, you know what you're going for. So for, we just went over the press. Now in the overhead position, the one thing, so from here, where should the hand be? Okay. What I would say is I don't like, so if, if the palm is facing this way, I'm just not a huge fan of this. Because look where the kettlebell is, and if we're doing a heavy load or under fatigue during a long set, and this does happen, like the elbow wants to break, right? So this can happen. So by, you know, the thumb, obviously due to your flexibility and your limitations in, in mobility, you might not be able to get the thumb straight back. I don't say it needs to be there, but I would say either at a 45 and just know you don't want to be here. So let's have everyone grab the bell, go through a nice position. Now look, I'm not reaching up here, and I'm also not down here. My shoulder is set exactly like Doug said, so I have a long open neck position, but my elbow's locked, and I'm still, this is set, but I'm also reaching up a little bit, and the thumb's back. This is the position I want you guys to get comfortable with, and I've got overhead walks. Let's go ahead and lower it, and we'll switch. So from here, squeeze the glutes, squeeze the quads, squeeze the abs, good rack position press up overhead, my thumb is pointing in the backwards direction, shoulders are down, but I'm also reaching up, the shoulders down, but I'm also reaching up to lock out the elbow, and the bicep is close to the ear, so it's not out here, so it's right underneath my base of support. So let's just go ahead and just walk a step back and a step forward. This is a great exercise to start building comfort in the overhead position. Because in a five minute set of what everyone's going to be doing for the single arm long cycle, if you've got tension over here because you're, you don't have the mobility or the flexibility, so if my elbow's bent or this, this is going to, like I can already feel this frying my, my traps, my triceps. You want this to be locked out. Nice, good position. All right, let's lower it down under control. Pull it down to the chest and then lower it down. So just... Above, we're gonna rise above, make this market think themselves. Rise above, we're gonna...